Hey everyone, Val here, and it is time for my weekly weigh-in. And I know I haven't done that in a couple of weeks because I've been away on vacation. So how did I do while I was on vacation? Well, we're going to find out in just a minute. But I want to start off by reading uh, a page from my book, Happy Habits. And um, it's talking a little bit about happiness. So I thought this would be good for today. Um, starting out, um, our going into our Easter season here, going into to Easter. And uh, let's talk a little bit about being happy. It says, forgive them, all of them. The more times you can forgive, the better you feel. In fact, forgiveness could be renamed forgiveness. It's a gift of inner peace you give to yourself. And I do find, you know, sometimes it's really hard for me to forgive people who have wronged me in some way. But when I let it go and forgive them, it, it usually brings more peace of mind to myself. So I, I'm agreeing with this, what they're saying here. Um, I know that forgiveness can be really, really hard when somebody doesn't do right by you. Um, it says, that doesn't mean you have to forget either. <laughs> you can forgive them and then just move on. That doesn't mean you have to still associate with that person or whatever. If it's, you know, if it's something, someone that you don't really have to be around all the time. It says, according to a new study in the Journal of Healthy Health Psychology, forgiveness reduces stress and increases joy. Christopher Peterson, a psychologist at the University of Michigan, agrees. He says the ability to forgive is a quality strongly linked to positive, happy people. And we all want to be positive, happy people. Because if we're positive and we're happy, then it'll help us, I think, to achieve our goals. If we're not positive and we're not happy and we're always down, then we're not going to go after our goals as much as we probably want to because we're just not a happy person. So I think we need to practice being more happy and then maybe we can achieve some of like our fitness goals and stuff. That can be really be a challenge. So make it a habit. It says, according to research, researchers Julie Exline and Roy uh, Boomeister, the process of forgiveness can be experienced in two ways. Privately, with eternal emotions, where you let go and release the anger. And then publicly, where external behaviors, where you outwardly express forgiveness. You know, saying forgiveness, saying I forgive you or something to somebody. To work on Private forgiveness, whenever you feel resentment, rise up within, repeat the mantra, resentment hurts me, not them, I choose to forgive. And, and it does really, a lot of people don't even know that you're mad and they don't know they offended you or, or whatever and or they just don't care and they move on from it and they go to the next victim, whoever it might be. And they don't care that you're you're holding a resentment or you're angry about something. They they just don't care. So forgiving them a lot of times, forgiving them wouldn't do any good outwardly by telling them, "Oh, it's okay, I forgive you." For what? You know, what did I do? Oh, that's your own issue. So if you can internally say, "Okay, I forgive them." Maybe they didn't know what they were doing. Maybe they're just you know a little ignorant or something. You know, uh, and then it'll help you yourself feel better. It says work on public forgiveness, plan a coffee meetup with your offender and share some comforting words with them. If you can't do it in person, write emails or letters. Emails and letters I find sometimes can be misread. So if it comes to something where you really want to talk to somebody, that should be a more face-to-face -face conversation, I think. Um, People can really misread emails and take what you're saying to be mean. Oh, that was a really mean email where you were intending it to be something different than that. So anyway, can we work on forgiveness this week? Um, if there's anybody in your life that you need to forgive, that is. Um, I don't think I have anybody in that right now, in that line of I'm holding on to a grudge or anything like that. I, I have not done that in a while, so uh, I don't think I'm there, but it's a good chapter. 
So how did I do while I was on vacation? Well, you know that typically on vacation, I can gain five to 10 pounds, no problem, easy. Especially if I'm on a cruise, forget about it. I'm gaining at least 10 pounds. Um, going to India was a different situation. Um, and I'm gonna do a chat, a live chat Sunday, which tomorrow I believe, because you'll probably be watching this on Saturday. But I'm gonna do a live chat at 3 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow on Sunday to talk about India. And I'm going to answer a whole bunch of questions that people have put out to me, uh, questions about the food, questions about the culture, questions about pretty much a little bit of everything that we did over there. If you have any questions, if you get them to me today, I can add those into the live chat or even better, come over to the live chat and ask the questions in the, in the live stream so that I can make sure I answer any questions that you may have about India. Um, one thing I will be talking about is the food and is the fact that um, I definitely did not overeat because um, the food didn't agree with me. So I'm going to go through the whole scenario of how I ate and, um, and, and I ended up eating foods that I don't normally eat because I could, um, I could digest them better. I could, uh, not get sick from them, eating them. And I really thought that was going to push my weight up, but I ended up coming back at a lower weight than I went, which I never do on vacation. I will never go on a vacation and lose weight. That it just doesn't happen. Um, that tells you, how much I didn't eat and when I did eat it was because I was pretty much starving and I couldn't eat the foods that they had and I just ended up eating rice white rice and um pizza towards the end because I knew that it didn't have spices in it and I knew that I could I, I hoped that I could tolerate it because it was not gluten-free but being that I had just had the hernia operation in November I was able to eat the pizzas without having that internal pain from the hernia. So I was really, really happy that I could eat that because I didn't have options that I could eat um, that I normally ate. Uh, I don't know what exactly was making me sick all the time. It was if it was a dairy products, if it was products uh, with milk or water in them. Don't know the spices. Even when I ate pancakes and stuff in the morning, it, it nothing set with me. So, um, I, I basically ate granola bars that I took with me and white rice and, and pizzas towards the end because a couple of the rest, a couple of the hotels we stayed at towards the end had pizza. So, um, I ended up ordering a pizza like three nights in a row and splitting it with my sister. And that's what we had for dinner. And that normally is not something I would do because of the um, carbs, but my body needed them at that point because I was pretty much in uh, survival mode over there. I'll talk more about that on the live stream tomorrow. So when I left here, I weighed 184. Um, Typically, I would have gained to, and I would have probably be 190 over by now. But when I weighed in this morning, I weighed in at 183.2, which was a loss of 0.8. And like I said, I don't lose on vacation ever. And just 0.8, it's a little bit of a loss, but typically I would have been coming back trying to lose 10 pounds that I put on. So that for the year i am still because i started the year at 182.2 this year so i'm still a pound over where i started for the year i haven't had a totally successful year um but for since i've started um my weight challenge um back in january of 2022 so like a year and a half ago maybe um, I have lost 28.6 pounds. So that's a win. All right. So I am going to leave it at that. I'm going to be happy with the little bit of loss being that I was on vacation. So there's no other way to get around that uh, besides a gain. And um, I will see y'all hopefully on the live stream tomorrow. So come on by and hang out. Ask me questions about India 
ask me about the food, ask me about the, the touring, ask me about the wedding, anything you want to ask me, um, I'll be more than happy to answer those questions for you. So I'm going to keep this short. I got a hundred things to do because being away for two weeks, I have bills to pay. It's the beginning of the month. I just finished grocery shopping. So I have that grocery shopping haul that'll probably come out on Monday. Um, I have laundry to do. I have bunches of things. I want to repot my tomato plants. My list is a mile long. Anyway, so I need to get busy on what I'm doing. Um, so thank y'all for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and you want to. And uh, I will catch you all on the next video. Bye now.